Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and it's Friday, and we're starting to get commons as uh, spoilers. So I think the rest of Ravnica Allegiance has been spoiled. I'm just not going to count them all. I'm sure some of the commons are wonderful, but uh, just for time's sake, I'm just going to cover the spoilers for uncommons, and there's like one or two rares. So first up, we got Blood Mist Infiltrator. Uh, it's a 3-1 for 3, and uh, whenever it attacks, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, it can't be blocked this turn. So... Bit of a loss, but it's a potential 3 damage threat at any given point. That is dangerous as hell, and it kind of reminds me of Rakdos's. oh, this creature can't block this turn, you know, the one single creature you left on defense so you don't die this turn, and it'll probably go in the same deck. But then again, 3-1 for 3, I mean, it's not that great, it dies to everything. It's a nice trick, but eh. Uh, next up, we got Clear the Stage. It's five costs instant, and uh, target creature gets negative three, negative three until end of turn. That's nice. If you control a creature with power four or greater, you may return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So, kind of a weird unrelated bonus, but it'll maybe help you get something back to kill, I guess. Negative three can definitely take down some stuff, but for five, that's utterly ridiculous. You'd basically have to do it with the second effect, or it's not a worthwhile spell. And plus, people are already playing around Lightning Strike. Well, and Lava Spike and Fight with Fire, so... But still, like, 3 is not outrageously high. But you could interrupt combat, shrink it by 3, and then kill it. But for 5 mana, really? A combat trick for 5 mana? There's ones in white that cost 1. Next up, Code of Constraint. Oh my gosh, that artwork is freaking awesome! Anyway, uh, 3 cost instant target creature gets negative 4 attack, negative 0 toughness, until end of turn, draw a card. So, that's nice. I mean, I, it's not going to drop its toughness, it won't get it killed. It might help in what would have normally been a trade, or to ram it into a death toucher. But you do immediately draw a card, which is good, because this effect isn't very good. But, addendum, if you cast a spell during your main phase... First of all, why? What would be the circumstance there? I'm curious. But also, tap that creature and it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So, basically, it's just a completely different spell. So, nice effect for three, whatever. Uh, I'm pretty sure you still draw the card. I don't think addendum is a replacement effect. I totally don't remember. Could be wrong there. But, um, I mean, this is nice. This is a nice control -y card. There's nothing particularly special about it. But the whole draw a card thing... You can put it in an arc light deck if you want to be a dick, I guess. I don't know, there's better stuff to put in there. Who am I kidding? If you're running that deck, you're already a dick. Next up, Dagger Caster. Oh my gosh, this artwork looks so cool, too. Uh, it's a 2 3 for 4, and when it enters battlefield, it deals 1 damage to each opponent. Well, <laughs> I wonder why. That's so random. And 1 damage to each creature your opponents control. Oh, good! Another Goblin Chain Whirler. At least this is a 2 3 without first strike, and it costs 4. That's actually kind of reasonable. There is not one damn thing reasonable about Goblin Chain Whirler. That card was a mistake. I'm just pissed that now we have two of them, but at this cost and the fact that it does nothing in combat after that, I don't know if people will honestly even play this. Next up in Rage, Ceratok. It's a 4-4 for 4, and it can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. Just simple. It's, uh... Kind of semi-trample, I guess, except that it's, like, really semi-unblockable. Well, I mean, it's literally semi-unblockable. It's not just kind of semi-unblockable. Personally, I can't stand this effect on Steel Leaf Champion. It just gets in the way so much, people forget it. It's just stupid. It's annoying. I just want to chump it. Just, oh my god, get over it. Just give it trample if you want to get that damn excited about your stupid little Ceratok. So, you know what? I hate this thing. Let's go on to the next one. Flames of Razebor. Of the Razebor. Whatever. Who cares? It's a giant flaming uh, pig coming at you. Oh my gosh, there is a joke I want to make so hard in reference to that. But, oh my gosh, would it be an 11 out of 10 on the dickometer? Anyway, this is a 6 cost instant. What does this do? Flames of the Razebor deals 4 damage to target creature and opponent controls... Then it deals 2 damage to each of the other creatures that player controls if you control a creature with power 4 or greater. I'm starting to think they were going to make this a mechanic and then they just gave like Rakdos a different mechanic and then they just wrote it on some of the cards. This is kind of really like arbitrary. FYI, this is basically an is it card because of Drake's. You probably won't control a creature power 4 or greater in every Rakdos deck all of the time. And 6 is way too high for almost anything red right now that isn't is it. So, welcome to a new Is It card. Now, this, working with that stupid black skeleton piece of crap that gives every single instant and sorcery death touch, absolutely ridiculous. But so is the mana cost of six, so I don't know. 
Overall, it just screams okay. It might go in something. Uh, next up, Junk Troller. Oh, this looks cool, too. Damn, they got some good artwork on these. Uh, zero six for four, Defender. I like that. And then uh, tap it, put target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. So just repetitive, get rid of uh, Jumpstart. This could shut down Drake's. And it's a legitimate sideboard card because it's four. It doesn't care about color. It could go on anybody's sideboard. It's a zero six, which will just sit there like a boat anchor in the middle of uh, combat. And every single time a jumpstart card goes to the graveyard, boom, it's gone. In fact, I'd like to just see an enchantment in blue that says every time an instant or sorcery card enters a graveyard from anywhere, it immediately gets exiled. That would be nice. I, jumpstart is just awful. It's just absolutely terrible. Uh, next up, Precognitive Perception. Okay, I should correct that. The amount of draw, card draw, in Jumpstart. I love the mechanic. It's a much more fair version of Flashback. The amount of card draw with Jumpstart is ridiculous. So anyway, Precognitive Perception, one of the rares here. Uh, it's a five-cost uh, instant draw three. This looks really familiar. Did I already spoil this? If you cast a spell during your main phase, instead scry three, then draw three. This is a repeat. What the hell? This is like completely out of order. We've already seen this card. Well, thanks, MythicSpoiler.com. Anyway, uh, still a great card. Uh, next up, Rumbling Rune. It's a 6-6 six, six for 6. When it enters the battlefield, count the number of 1-1 one, one counters on creatures you control. Creatures your opponents control with power less than or equal to that number can't block this turn. Ooh. I mean, if it's real high number, you probably didn't need this. You would have won anyway. And then it's like, do you even need the effect? It's a 6-6. Six, six. You're probably going to win with this if they don't blow it up. So it seems like it kind of almost like contradicts itself. It could be lethal, but so could, like, a whole bunch of other crap in red that costs six. Just Banefire. I mean, this just seems really random. Uh, next up, Screaming Shield. That artwork's totally awesome, too. And uh, I think all these awesome artworks were, like, by different people. Like, this one's Titus. I've been looking a little bit. I think, wasn't he one of the ones whining about not getting paid enough? Good job, Titus. Uh, either that or he did something really awesome. It's one of the two. <laughs> so this is a Screaming Shield. Uh, Lady carrying it is super not having that, but uh, it's a one drop. An equipped creature gets plus zero, plus three. So eh, typical shield. Oh, and has. I read this the first time. I'm like, what? How does this work? I mean, you can actually tap equipment and it still stays equipped and it still functions and it doesn't tap the creature it's on. But no, they meant the creature it's equipped to gains. Well, it says has, but uh, pay to tap. Target player puts the top three cards of their library into the graveyard. Oh, go to mill card. Awesome. And then equip three. So don't mix any of those up. Those are really two and a half separate things. That's not a contradiction. I love the, the flavor text of just, shh, well, like, why'd you forge it? Why'd you buy it? Why are you carrying it? Like, if you're going to shush your stupid shield, that clearly is a screaming face, you're an idiot. That's like moving next to an airport and being like, these airplanes are still loud. You're an idiot. Uh, that equip three, that's where they lost me. I mean, it's one drop. Ooh, it's dirt cheap. So what? It's three to equip. And then as soon as they blow it up anyway, it's three more to move it. Uh, the next card was somehow another repeat. I don't know what's wrong with Mythic Spoiler and their chronological ordering here. So next, next up, we've got Spider Mangler. Uh, it's a three cost two one with flash. That's always cool. Flying, cool. And uh, when it enters the battlefield, target creature with flying you control gets plus two attack until end of turn, which could be itself. I can almost not think of a situation where it wouldn't be. I mean, okay, you have another flyer, but like, really? Do you? You don't. This is just like a, a not as reliable flash in death toucher for three. Four damage is four damage, like whatever, but... I don't know, two and in the air for three after that, and you're probably just going to chump it or lose it or trade, whatever. Doesn't seem that great, although if you get a death trigger off it with, like, Midnight or whatever the hell that card is, great. Uh, so next up, you got Swirling Torment. Uh, I, I don't think Minotaurs can swim that well in that heavy of armor. Um, I think that's the point, actually. Is that Domri in the background? <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay. Um, so it's five-cost sorcery. Choose one or both. So in other words, both. Uh, put target creature on top of its owner's library and then return target creature to its uh, owner's hand. So it's just a double bounce. Um, I'd rather just bounce and draw a card for four, thanks, with the two option on it. This is really not a very good spell. I mean, back to the library, no joke. It is on the top, so you ruin their next draw, but they guarantee to get it back. So it's not really that great. Next up, oh my gosh, I love this artwork. Tin Street Dodger. I am all about that hat and whatever the hell he's wearing. <laughs> So anyway, it's a 1-1 haste goblin rogue for one, so I actually already hate it. 
Um, if you pay one red, uh, it can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with defenders. So in other words, it can't be blocked this turn. So it's just a shitty 1-1 one, one merfolk that you have to pay for every time. Whatever, I freaking hate Goblin Tribal, it's garbage. It's a shame they put such nice artwork on something, just this it's obnoxiously like bad and simultaneously annoying. Next up, Tower Defense. That's an odd choice of name. Uh, it's a two-cost instant in green. Creatures you control get plus five defense and gain reach until end of turn. Okay. You know what might be even more fun? Prevent all combat damage that would be done this turn. For pretty much the same amount of mana. I don't know what kind of fog effects are currently in standard, but it's just... This doesn't strike me as an immediately awesome spell. There are better spells than this. Next up, Vindictive Vampire. It's a 2-3 for 4, and whenever another creature you control dies, ooh, another death trigger. We needed this on top of Midnight. Uh, Vindictive Vampire deals 1 damage to each opponent, and you gain 1 life. Oh my god, it's finally that card again. I don't remember what the hell the card was, but it was this card. Something cutthroat, I think. I think we had one in BFZ too. Unless I'm thinking of the same one. That card was absolutely insane. Now, this is only creatures you control, but this is huge because if you're losing a creature either by your own choice or because they killed it in combat or removal spell, then you're going to want a little something out of that, a little two-life difference to kind of make up for it. So this and some other death triggers combined are going to make a damn good Rakdos deck. Uh, next up, Wall of Lost Thoughts. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. Let me just stop it right there, though. I know where the thoughts are, okay? They're not that lost. They all went over to Twitch. That's where all the thoughts are. Anyway, it's a 0-4 defender wall, which you'll need to stop that stupid goblin. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. Wonderful, great. Sort of a mill card that sits there and stalls out the game. And the rest of the deck is control and 30 copies of that stupid advisor. Screw this awful card. Oh, and thank God that's the last one. So more control cards, more mill cards, more toxic red rush cards. What a batch this one was. Boy, somebody at Wizards doesn't like Fridays. So uh, yeah, I double check. We do now know 259 out of 259 cards. Uh, I think if I see some real cool commons, I'll make a follow-up to this. I just honestly don't have time today. I was, of course, busy dominating FNM with my clone deck. Almost went 3-0. So anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget the pre-release is next, well, next, next weekend, kind of, not tomorrow. And I will see you guys next video.